118 trillion cubic feet of gas buried in rock, Geology In reports. The so-called unconventional deposits of oil and gas are found in shale. It's a type of layered fine-grained rock. We see this all over the place, and we never know how full of uh, natural resources it could be. A time capsule containing 118 trillion cubic feet of gas buried in northern Australia, two to three kilometers beneath the surface of Australia's northern territory, sits buried energy. The layered rock formation known as Valkiri Shale were recently estimated to contain over 118 trillion cubic feet of gas. While these gas reserves are clearly large, what's really remarkable is their age. These rocks were deposited 1,400 million years ago in an ocean known as the Roper Seaway. These rocks and their encased oil and gas are about a billion years older than rocks where oil, and, where oil and gas are usually found. The molecules that make up the oil and gas, they're called hydrocarbons because they consist of hydrogen and carbon atoms, are the long decomposed remains of dead bacteria that inhabited ocean, uh, ancient oceans. This is what some theories claim, the old theories. There are those that claim that uh, oil and gas is actually made by volcanoes. Uh, but that's another theory. We're going towards what this article says. Now, these are the most unconventional, unconventional hydrocarbons yet discovered. They're unconventional because the type of rock they're contained in and their age. This antiquity gives us a rare chance to use the remains of the bacteria to examine the chemistry of the ancient oceans, the composition of the ancient atmosphere, and the nature of life 1,400 million years ago. Ancient oceans. Recently we've learned a lot about Earth's ancient marine environment. This can be achieved by analyzing rare elements, particularly cerium, SE for short, and molybdenum, molybdenum, MO for short, extracted from the once living organic matter within the Valkyrie shale. CE and MO act as indicators of how much oxygen was available in the oceans 1,400 million years ago. The studies reveal an ocean starved of oxygen, even in surface waters. At deeper depths, this ocean was completely toxic, rich in hydrogen sulfide. These results indicate that Earth's atmosphere at the time was oxygen poor. In fact, it's likely that it contains less than 3% oxygen, and currently we enjoy 21% oxygen in Earth's atmosphere and a largely oxygenated ocean. Further work by our colleagues has focused on extracting molecules of biological origin from the same rocks. These biomarkers have revealed an ocean dominated by bacteria. But why is the age of the Valkyrie shale so unusual? It's got a lot to do with the unique sequence of events that occurred that need to occur to produce and preserve oil and gas. Rethinking peak oil. The Valkyrie shale contains enough gas to power Australia for more than 90 years at current consumption rates. While only a proportion of this gas would be recoverable, a resource estimate of 118 trillion cubic feet forms a large onshore unconventional, unconventional shale gas reserve in the country, soon to be the largest gas exporter in the world, Australia. Oil and gas are non-renewable resources. The concept of peak oil and more broadly peak hydrocarbons refers to the point in time when the maximum rate of oil and gas extraction is reached. However, the technological development of unconventional oil and gas, and now the realization that gas can be sourced from extremely old rocks such as the Valkyrie Shale, means that the arrival of peak hydrocarbons may be further delayed. The development of unconventional oil and gas remains contentious, and well-formed public debate will ultimately decide whether such shale gas resources are developed. If the Valkyrie shale moves from exploration to production, we'll be making use of gas produced in a slime world, quote-unquote, that existed nearly a billion years before the first complex life on Earth evolved, where bacteria ruled the seas 
and the atmosphere was largely devoid of oxygen. This story was based on materials provided by the University of Adelaide. It's on uh, Geology Inn. Now, the thing is, though, that there are those that believe that uh, oil and gas are produced by volcanic activity. That's another uh, thing that has something to do with this article, but that's another issue we have to get into another time. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.